So, we, at Matt's request, when I say we, me and Deanna, our team route three, we have been tasked with the job of calculating the level of precision we need for the square root of three, which clearly for Newton wasn't available by calculator either. So while these guys are working on the sort of serious expansion of the clever derivation of pi, we need to get that root three term, which is part of that derivation. We need that to however many decimal places that they ask it for. And there are various methods that we are playing with, one of which we think was probably available to Newton. We don't know whether the algorithm we've ended up using was available to him, uh, but I'll explain the algorithm and then you can go and figure out whether you, you think it works. So there's one method which uh, you could do by bino binomial expansion, which is very similar to method to what the other guys are doing on, on the, the big picture. And you can work out root three individually by binomial expansion, but we kind of suspect that it's gonna be a lot slower than the other method we eventually used. So we've gone with an algorithm, which I can point to on paper, which feels a bit arcane, uh, but it's a good exercise to think about why it does find a square root. It's a little bit like long division for square roots. So we have the number we're trying to square root, which is a three here. Uh, and we write out a bunch of decimal places beyond it, a little bit like long division would be, which these guys are doing lots of, but they go in pairs, so pairs of digits. And that feels really mysterious until you realize that when you square single digits, this is all about squaring and square rooting, when you square single digits, you get at most a two digit number. So the process of squaring and square rooting changes between one digit and two digits, and that's kind of why these things go in pairs. Uh, you can go and check whether you believe that in your own time. So you find a number that fits into the first digit. We have a three here. We need to find a number that squares into three and doesn't go over it. So if you try and square two, you get four, that's too big. So all we're left with is one squared is one. So we write down one as our first digit and that's the beginning of square root of three. We can check what we've got left over. So if you, if you square one, you get one, you take that away from three and you get a two, which I've written down here. And that's kind of like our remainder, which you might be used to from a long division algorithm. And then we bring down a, uh, a double zero, in this case, because we've got a bunch of zeros to go. Whatever these digits were, we'd bring two of them down, and we've got a 200 left to work with now. And this is the slightly weird bit. Is this yeah. fair, Deanna? This is the bit that feels a bit strange. You go and grab the digit you just wrote down as part of your answer, which in our case is one. You double it, and you write it down here, and you put another digit after it. So I write down a two and then leave a space for another digit. And I need to figure out what digit will fill in that space and also get multiplied by the two digit number I've just made to create a number which fits into my remainder. If this is sounding awkward to you, it sounds awkward to me too. <laughs> in this case though, by way of example, I've got two and a gap times a gap to give me something less than 200. It turns out seven fits. 27 times seven is 189, which is less than 200. I couldn't go any higher because 28 times eight is too big. Once I realized that, seven is the next digit in my answer, so I write seven at the top. Calculate the difference between the 189 and the 200 that I've got, and then start the process again. So all the time we're sort of bringing down the next two digits, which is a little bit like the long division where they do one digit at a time. Find out the digit that goes in and you repeat, and you end up honing in, homing in, you end up homing in on the square root of three in this case after some large calculations. Unfortunately, uh, after a page or so, you end up with digits, with many digits following them. We are currently working with numbers approximately 12 quintillion and higher, which I feel, I don't know, some respect for Isaac <laughs> Newton for pushing through this far, if he did. We don't know exactly how he calculated the square root of three when he did it.